So my name is Tony Floor. I'm a partner at the Boston office of a law firm uh, known as Hogan Levels. With me today are my colleagues, Jody Newman and Natasha Tidwell. And so we led the team uh, for Hogan Levels that conducted the investigation into the conduct of Senator Rosenberg, as Senator Rogers just described. Uh, our team also included other Hogan Levels attorneys. Uh, to elaborate a little bit on what was just said, we searched over 250,000 emails, reviewed tens of thousands of text messages and other documents, conducted 45 witness interviews um, of Senate personnel and others who had business before the Senate. Our team of attorneys spent more than uh, 1,200 hours working on the investigation and the resulting report, which you now have and I'm sure you've read by now, uh, in the brief time you've had it. Um, and as mandated by the Senate order, we were uh, required to maintain the confidentiality of any witnesses who sought it. We did that at great lengths. You'll see in the report the information is de-identified. I want to reiterate that the Ethics Committee had no influence whatsoever in our work, our report, or our conclusions. Senator Rosenberg cooperated fully, as, as was just stated. He was interviewed for approximately 11, 11 hours over two days. Um, so let me briefly talk about our conclusions, which Senator Rogers just alluded to. As we began the investigation, four distinct topics came to focus, and our comprehensive report draws conclusions about each of those four, which I'll summarize. First was the firewall that was alluded to. It's not a rule of the Senate, but it was a standard that Senator Rosenberg announced on December 3rd, uh, 2014. We found that the firewall was non-existent to the extent that it was intended and understood to limit access of information between Senator Rosenberg's office and Brian Hefner. We found that Hefner had unfettered access both before and after the firewall was announced and after Senator Rosenberg was the named Senate president. Second, the IT policy, we found Senator Rosenberg violated that policy continually by sharing his confidential LAS network password with Brian Hefner from 2009 through February of 2017. By doing that, he allowed Brian Hefner access to confidential Senate information. While his stated reason for doing that was to allow <coughs> Hefner access to his daily schedule and to understand what he was doing on a day-to-day -day basis, that obviously could have been done in many other ways, which would not have entailed giving Hefner access to the confidential Senate information. This password access was only terminated in March of 2017 when Senator Rosenberg's staff members detected two instances of an email where uh, Brian Hefner surreptitiously emailed two other public officials as if he were Senator Rosenberg. Third, we found no evidence that Senator Rosenberg was aware that Brian Hefner had sexually assaulted Senate staff or others having business before the Senate. Nevertheless, we conclude that Senator Rosenberg severely undermined the stated goal of the Senate anti-harassment policy, which is to promote a workplace free from any kind of uh, form of harassment. We found that because we found Senator Rosenberg should have known that Brian Hefner was likely to engage in sexual and racially harassing conduct towards Senate personnel, as detailed in our report. And he did not adequately address Brian Hefner's propensity to engage in such conduct. The Senate order also asked us to look at generally at Senator Rosenberg's conduct. And we found that in light of all the things that Senator Rosenberg knew about Brian Hefner, he acted unreasonably, both in giving Brian Hefner access to his confidential password, but also in sharing day-to-day -day information about the goings-on in the Senate with him. We found that he acted unreasonably because he certainly knew that Brian Hefner was likely to misuse that information which he did as detailed in the report. We also looked at Senate Rule 10, which was frankly the only rule in the Senate rules that might be applicable to this factual scenario. We found, that, and that rule generally prohibits senators having undue influence, or other Senate personnel, not just senators, having undue influence on any entity, including governmental entities, or using their office for private gain. Notably, the rule doesn't cover spouses of senators, and we found that the rule, excuse me, that Senator Rosenberg did not violate Senate Rule 10. As I stated at the outset, uh, a 
the investigation, our highest priority and guiding principle in our investigation was getting to the truth. The report does not refer to rumors or innuendo. It contains only those facts that we found uh, were able to corroborate or otherwise found credible. We remain true to our commitment to conduct a full, fair, and an independent investigation. 